Have you ever seen the episode where Spongebob and Patrick steal Sandy's rocket? Well, it's one of the funniest and weirdest episodes in season 1 of Spongebob. The episode is called Sandy's Rocket and it begins with Spongebob trying his best to convince Sandy Cheeks that aliens are real. Of course Sandy Cheeks is a scientist and for some reason she doesn't even believe aliens are real which I personally think is pretty strange. But that's not the strangest thing, I always wonder to myself and I'm pretty sure you have too as a Spongebob fan. How exactly does Sandy Cheeks afford and fund all these different projects she has going on? Where does she get the material to build this massive rocket, for example? Or even her home itself is something of such extraordinary feats that we can't even reproduce today. But back to the episode, Spongebob tells Sandy Cheeks one of the reasons aliens are real is simply because of Atlantis. Now, in the Spongebob universe, we know that Atlantis is real. It is a place of wacky and unnecessary characters. Atlantis and Spongebob is not a place you want to be. The people that live there are real kooks. Bikini Bottom is way more civil and enjoyable than living in Atlantis in the Spongebob universe. Another reference he makes is the crop field circles, which is simply a reference to the crop circles we see here on land, which actually makes a lot of sense. And then his final reference to Sandy Cheeks, which I thought was so funny as a little kid, was the 99 cent store. For some reason, Spongebob believes the 99 cent store is the reason for aliens, which I think is hilarious. Maybe he's talking about humans, because I mean, Spongebob has been to the surface world many times, even though this episode happened before he took his first steps on land. So after this little conversation, we see Sandy Cheeks herself leave Spongebob because she's probably irritated with him. And I think this was her biggest mistake. This is where Spongebob finds his idiotic friend and sidekick, Patrick Starr, and they decide to steal Sandy Cheeks' rocket. Now, I don't even know how, if it's cartoon logic or Spongebob's Toon Force, he's somehow able to launch this rocket into space. As we see the rocket launch, tons of smoke emit out of the backside of the rocket, which somehow end up in Sandy Cheeks' dome. As a kid, I always wondered how this was possible since Sandy Cheeks' dome itself is sealed shut. So as Spongebob and Patrick are on their way to the moon, they all of a sudden start to hit zero gravity where they start to float around. And this is where things start to get interesting. They somehow cause malfunctions within the ship, which cause the ship to crash down back to Bikini Bottom. Now, obviously, to these two dimwits, they don't even know they're back in Bikini Bottom, so they actually do think to themselves they're on an alien world. The first thing they see is Gary, and that's when Patrick goes, Hi, Gary, what's up? SpongeBob, however, has a different agenda right here. He lets Patrick in on the secret that everything he's seeing here is an alien illusion, and these are all aliens. Their new goal is simple, they're going to capture every single alien, bring it back to Bikini Bottom and prove to Sandy aliens are real. So Spongebob and Patrick basically go on capturing every single resident of Bikini Bottom and the best part, the best one they captured was Squidward. They literally make their way to where they believe Squidward or the alien Squidward will be, sneak into his house, and they end up having a fight with Squidward while he's sleeping. They're literally making this more epic than it is, grabbing onto his tentacles and pretending he's fighting back. And after they capture him, they have a giant celebratory dance and start to yell out these massive victory calls. This, in my opinion, is the highlight of this episode. It was just so perfectly illustrated and fits the theme of SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward so well. Now, as they leave, every resident is basically captured except for Sandy Cheeks, and she tries her best to convince SpongeBob and Patrick when she finally meets up with them that this is actually Bikini Bottom. Do they listen? No, they instantly capture her and start to drag her off. Now, at this point, they've captured everybody, so what they think is the best idea is to start to pack them in the spaceship. And once everybody is finally packed, this is where things turn up another level. SpongeBob begins to gaslight Patrick, and they both think they're aliens, so they aim the guns at each other, and this is where Patrick's gun backfires and captures himself. SpongeBob packs Patrick into the space shuttle and somehow this broken space shuttle is able to fly again and SpongeBob launches it back off into space. Now on his way to space, he's supposed to pass over the moon and he ends up crashing on top of the moon. And when he steps out, he realizes, oops, he may have made a mistake. The look on his face when the people trapped in the spaceship start to call his name just got me. I couldn't stop laughing. It just brought back such good memories as a child. And that's the wild ride of Sandy Cheeks' rocket. Are you a new or old fan of Spongebob? Because if you're an old fan, I'm pretty sure you remember watching this as a kid and it must have been a really enjoyable ride. And if you're a new fan, well, you learned something new today and I'm telling you, you need to go back and watch these older episodes of Spongebob. They have a different quality of humor compared to the newer ones.